here already? He's here already, guys. Sorry. We'll get into it. All right. You know what? We'll we'll come back to our um recap of last week. We already yes. had he's already here with us. The one, the only Demario Houston. Um Demario, welcome to the to come on CFL. We greatly appreciate you showing up here today and and telling us how trash Nick Taylor was when he played in the CFL and how you hey. taught him how to play cornerback. So hey. Nick, Nick, jump on in, man. Hold on, he's on time. He's never on time to any meetings that we had in practice. He, I, I'm so, he's he's early. So, he's never been on, early. So hey, this is that oh, new so this now. is that new top DB money he's getting. So now he's you know he's being a leader. He's showing up on time. He's being that guy. Everything that he wasn't in Winnipeg when I played with him. And probably because he now. followed me so much, you know, as my understudy. And I was always late. So oh. he became late, too. So he got that from me. I, I got oh, that from me. man. No. You know, I'm, I'm always on time, man. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How, How you, you feeling? Ah, feeling great, man. You missed you know, last just... game. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll be back soon. I'll be back soon. Okay, okay. Um, your team went down last game, man. How you feel about that one, man? It was a close game. Y'all had the game for most of it, most part of it. Um, in control the whole game, and then y'all played the, the defender champions, and they come back and and they get the win on y'all. How do you feel about that? One? Man, I feel like uh, I might get a fine because I was in here yelling in my apartment. I was so <laughs> pissed off. Uh, but now nah, we played good. Um. Just got to finish at the end. Uh, small things that just kept us from winning. You not being out there. That's that's the small things. No, nah, don't answer nah, that question. Don't answer that question. Don't ask, don't let me set you up. Don't let me set you up. Yeah. You got a locker room to go to, man. Don't let me set you up. Hey, there you go, man. Playing around. Hey, man. We just want to welcome you to the show, man. You are our first guest. Um, I consider you my little brother. Um. We came up and, together. And yet, you're, and yet you were about to do a Keyshawn Johnson on his ass. You know, I, that's why that's why I stopped it. I will not set him up like that. I'm not going to let him go in the locker room all messed up. They pay attention to the podcast. They see what's going on. I ain't going to do that to my man. But, man, welcome to the show, man. It's, it's amazing to have you here, man. The CFL interception leader last year. Um, Man, first of all, I'm going to ask you, man. How did you get the name, the nickname Spoon, the Mario Spoon Houston? Tell us about that. So, um, high school, um, that's when my uncle gave it to me. Uh, he had a, a teammate that he grew up with, and, you know, I just reminded him of him in so many ways. He was an athlete, so um, me just growing up and just being an athlete and playing football, basketball, just, man, I was in the streets playing playing sports all day from the time the sun came up till it went down. So um, I guess that's how his friend was. And, you know, he gave me the nickname and it's just stuck with me. Um, I tell people, I tell people call me Spoon because one, they either forget my name or they pronounce it wrong. So I'm just like, all right, you can't mess up Spoon. And I go forget we, your name now. Did, did, I, did I mess wow. it up? The Mario? No, right. okay, yeah, you perfect. said it right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, nah, 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 Nick, he, he's supposed to be my boy, but he'll say it wrong sometimes, too. So I'd be like, hey, bro, just stick, stick with Spoon. Uh, that's not surprising with Nick. Hey, hey I, we thought it was because you was the little spoon in the bed with your wife, you know. We thought, hey, <laughs> hey, that's what we thought it was. My bad. Hey, I'm glad you clarified that for us, man. Hey, man, yeah. another quick question, man. I know you're, um, you're a father of five, um, a husband. What's your inspiration, man? What what gets you going every week? Is it the kids? Is it, you know, is it just the, the passion that you just normally come with? What, what gets you going, man? Um, they're my reason why. Um, why I go hard and why you know, I try to be the best person to me, the best athlete, you know, the best player. Um, I gotta set an example for my kids. Um, just setting the 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 lifestyle for them and you know they're the reason why I go hard bro and um my family back home you know they just push me and motivate me every week to go hard so you know it's only right that I give it 110. How, how I'm gonna let Rudy get to the next question how is it being a father of twins we understand that you got you know twins right now boy and a girl 
Yeah, boy and the girl. Man, hey, I ain't gonna lie. It, it ain't for the week. <laughs> I promise you. It's not for the week. But nah, it, you gotta have a good support system. Uh, my wife and my family, her family, um, they definitely make it easy, especially while I'm away in Calgary. You know, they're back home in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So I definitely want to give a shout out to my wife. So um, holding down the court while I'm, you know, doing my thing here. Okay. I heard just, you have, I, I heard, hold on, my bad. I heard uh, Nick, Nick get ready to have uh, twins. Nick. No, you didn't hear that. Nico's <laughs> the only, Nico's the only one, and he will be the only one. He's one and done like a Duke prospect. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Oh, you mean like Bronny? Yeah, like Bronny. A USC prospect. I should have said like a USC prospect. You're right. Uh, um, how, how difficult is that for you? Um, you know, I, I, actually, I actually just had a baby on June 1st, my third, and it's exhausting. Um, but how, how difficult is it for you to be away for so many months from, these, from small children that you're, you're missing out on these, the chance to see them grow up? Do they come up to, are they able to come up and visit? And how does that work for you? Um, yeah, it's it's definitely hard. You know, I put the time on you know, with my kids every day. Talk to them. Shoot, baby girl, uh, my truly my son, he actually was walking before I left. Um, my daughter loved when she wasn't she wasn't walking yet. She was still crawling, but she literally started walking last week. And, oh, um, he was, that was about eight months. Your your son that could have been that long. It was about eight months he started walking. Mm -mm. He left. He started walking literally before I came up for camp. Okay. So uh, they were probably what eleven months. Okay. Okay. I'm yeah. A little off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot off. <laughs> All but right. now uh, it, it's, it's definitely a blessing, though. Um, they'll be able to come up probably for my birthday in September. Um, but it, it is hard, you know, not being being with them and you know seeing them grow up. But I mean got to do what I got to do. Yep. Got to do it, baby. So what's your story? How did you get, how did you end up in the CFL? I see you went to Southern from North Carolina, went to Southern. Did you pledge a fraternity when you were at Southern? Nah, I, I, I thought about it, but seeing like my teammates, like they coming into, they came into the weight room and practice like zombies. I'm like, I'm trying to figure out like, what, what's, what's going on? And then I put it together. I'm like, like, nah, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Football is enough. I'm already trying to hey, juggle school, juggle practice, juggle weight. Nah, I'm good. What, what, what um, are they? What were they pledging when, when they came in like zombies? Was it Omega Sci-Fi or everything? They were all man, pledging different oh, terms. Yeah. All of, them. all of. Them. I'm like, yeah, I, I pass. Y'all, yeah, y'all got it. Man, I've been, I'm, I'm a member of Phi Beta Sigma. I've been in Sigma for 27 years, so. Oh, yeah, for real? Yeah. Long when I was 19 years old. So, yeah, I would, I always wonder, you know, because the HBCUs, I mean, it's everywhere. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, I, I played at play Florida State and fam, you around the corner and, you know, you have every, I mean, not to mention the band is like a, it's like a pledge process as well. So, yeah, yeah. pretty much. They go, just, they go just as hard as football or probably yeah. harder. Wow. I just, I, was, I ain't going to say it. <laughs> So, so how did you get? How did you end up in the CFL? What was your road to the CFL? Um, so I ended up going to a tryout. Winnipeg. It went to Texas. So I drove up to my aunt's house and I tried out. They liked me, but I guess I, I didn't make the cut. So then, I, right before I graduated, I went to Ottawa's tryout, and they actually came to Shelby, um, North Carolina, where I'm from. I ran the fastest 40 time, I think, 4.37. So, Nick, you know, don't get your speed up. Get Shoot. your speed up. Are we, are we going to tell this story? Do you want me to go hey. into the story? Hey, watch out. Hey. Do you want me to do it? Hey, I'm, I'm, t I'm telling my story right now. Okay. Uh, okay. Rudy, so, your so, so then oh. uh, <laughs> we, 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 we'll go back to that. Don't worry about it. I, I'll let the viewers hear, hear the real truth. Okay. But but uh, Winnipeg came to Charlotte, um, and they ended up picking me up, signing me. But uh, COVID happened, so I missed 2020 season, came up um, 21, and I was on PR basically the whole year. But, you know, got got some playing time, you know. Um, I actually was a strong half behind, behind uh, Nick Taylor. So, um, you know, I was showing him the ropes. He was showing mm -hmm. me the ropes. 
you know, you know. Uh, then next season, I got my opportunity to go play boundary corner, and um, the sky's just been the limit, you know. I just took my opportunity and I ran with it. Okay. What was the adjustment for you? I mean, because you obviously you played in American football, and, and there is an adjustment to playing in the CFL and the different rules and and, and just technique, obviously, because you don't get a, a what do you call it, the waggle, Nick? The it's waggle. The waggle. You, you, yep. you don't get you, you don't get that in, in in American football. So just getting used to that difference, you know, from playing in the in, in the U.S. to playing in Canada. Um. Yeah. More so, I had to work on my technique because, like, when I came into my rookie camp, uh. Coach J.Y., he like, he blow the whistle like every time. Oh, that's P.I., that's P.I., that's P.I. I'm like, but I'm, you know, I'm not even touching them really. <laughs> he's like, he's like, nah, like up here. They gonna they call gonna it. Call P. They gonna call P.I. Like, it's an offensive league. So um, that's my opinion anyway. Um, but I just had to work on my craft, work on my technique and my feet. Um, and just, I had to adjust to the game, especially at playing strong half like you have a lot of you, you gotta you, you gotta be a real athlete to, to play that position um i i don't know how nick made it work but uh <laughs> he, he he did his thing sometimes but you know all right all right okay educate me on <laughs> on canadian football here strong half what's that mean in canadian football it's, strong it's, side, like in, like in, in yeah. So you're on the strong the side, you're on the okay. field side. That's usually where the most, you know, the most the field, wide, the, most the wide field. side okay. for the quarterback. So they got more room to work with over there. So the strong okay. half is basically like the dime or the nickel, but you gotcha. still have a DB outside of you, and you have some another DB inside of you. Um, okay. So you usually, you basically you get all the routes, the, the the hardest routes, the you know. The most space you get to deal with on the field is right there because they're literally every route that they can do. So it's literally, to me, it's the hardest position on the field when it comes to guarding routes. Like boundary yeah. corner that he plays now is tough because you get a whole bunch of routes thrown at you. It's like being in the NFL over there. You're on the short side. The quarter, the receiver usually doesn't have a waggle, but it's the shortest, you know, it's the shortest throw to the receiver besides the person that's inside of him coming on the waggle. So you usually that's where the money makers are because you, it's a lot of targets over there, but it's the it's the position that's more most like the NFL because you don't get the waggle so much. So every so often teams try to, you know, they put a tight end down there and then they bring a waggle at you. So that's yeah. what that's the difference between that. So, so how amazing was Nick to your career, man? I mean, you know, we gotta see how what Nick really meant to your career. That's there, a great did question. He mean, did he mean nothing to your career? Did you teach him how to play football? No. <laughs> I really came in and I helped him out because I feel like he was getting close to the end of his career. And, you know, I just brought a, a great light to, you know, his last couple of years. And, you know, I really helped you out, my guy. So, but I, I can't say nah. Uh, he, he helped me out, man. He, he was a big mentor. Um, He really took me under his wing and I, I definitely appreciate him for that. Um, Just... Cause I, I kind of got discouraged because I'm just like, I, I felt like I was able, I, I felt like my talent was good enough to play with them my, my rookie year. But, you know, him and other guys also told me, like, my time will come, you know, just be ready and whenever it came, just take take advantage of it. All right. We about to get to the nitty gritty right now, man. Oh, fuck. So, you, was, you were the interception leader last year. And then you come to the off season, you play with Winnipeg, you were with them for the past three years, right? Yep. Um, and now you come to the off season. Now it's time to make a decision. What happened there, man? Was it not enough money? Was it, you know, did they not see you as a fit anymore? Too much at the boundary corner over there? You know, it's, it's, it's boundary corner you in Winnipeg. They they turned a lot of corners into big play, yeah. playmakers over there. So what happened over there, man? Did you want to go back? Oh, uh, I definitely wanted to go back, but I feel like, like you said, they they feel like at the boundary corner, they they, they plug in somebody every every year, and you know they make them all star. So I guess they felt like you know they would give me this price, and if I didn't want that price, then they I guess they felt like they could replace me, which I mean they have, you know. But um, and I guess I just I felt like. 
I deserve more money than what they they offer me. Um, my journey here to Calgary, you know, I, I felt wanted, you know, um, I feel like I'm in a great situation. So uh, I'm just God. God had a plan for me. Winnipeg wasn't wasn't in my plan. Calgary was. You just want to be wanted, man. I, I get that, man. Yeah. At the end of the day, you as a free agent, you want somebody to show you that they want you, that they care. Yeah. You know that you're important to their team, and Calgary stepped up and they let you know early on in the free agency period that you were their guy, and then you stepped up, took that you know that challenge to go there to a team that that struggled last year in the secondary. Um, no blame to me, um, but uh, last year was a little bit of a struggle in Calgary. Um, what do you feel you bring to that defense to that to that to that secondary in, in general? I guess I come with experience. You know, you know, as a teammate, that you know I'm not the most vocal, but I feel like they're, you know, I'm becoming more of a vocal leader. Um, just trying to bring the help the young guys, uh, you know, get to where we the expectation of of trying to, you know, go in the long run and and win a great cup, um, and just be ball hawks, bro. You you know. Anytime the ball in the air, man, I'm I'm trying to go get it. So I'm trying to have that where everybody is trying to get the ball, whether it's a fumble, interception, yeah, anything. Okay. Um. So you played Winnipeg two weeks ago. Now it's two yeah. weeks ago. Um. The last play of the game, you get the interception. Tell me, go through that play. Tell me your emotions, your feelings. You're playing against your your ex. You know, you want to show them that, you know, they let you go before they should have. So you really want to make a a big play, a big spark. You you just want to show them that you, you're you that guy and you should never let me go. Like go through that play and, and tell me your emotions after the game. Um, so one of the time to tell <laughs> um, going into overtime. And I just knew, like, you know, with them being short on the receivers with, with health-wise, uh, they were going to try to go with the dimps. Um, and we, we just had a good good read, me and uh, Kobe, and I, I switched off and shoot, made a play, man. And I really tried to end it. I was trying to I was trying to house it. I was trying to call game. They wasn't going to have uh, end of it. Boy, oh, that was, yeah, they, they definitely weren't going to hear the end of that. But um, just me making that play, it, it felt like a story, storybook. Um, everybody bring up. The play last year, um, I, I got the pick six against Calgary to, you know, seal the game for Winnipeg. This year, I, <laughs> oh yeah, you, oh yeah, you was, you, you was on the other side. Um, that was supposed to be my then, moment, man. That was supposed to be my moment that game, my revenge game. But hey, go my, ahead. Hey, you know, I, I did it for us. Um, but then you know, just to come, just to come back this year and you know, um, seal the game. For Calgary against Winnipeg, you know, like I said, man, it's just a story, storybook, and then storybook, whole situation, man. And I'm just grateful that you know God put me in this position to just be great. Okay. So, so last week when we were we did our first episode, we got to see um, a wide receiver named Dominique Grimes give Nick the business a couple times in a game, which we have on that video. Go get him started. Uh, you know, to Tossed him like a sack of potatoes, like a little five-year-old child. Who has he... been the best receiver that you have had the opportunity to face? Obviously, you're, you're playing, so if you don't want to answer that, you don't have to tell the who you think is the best receiver, but we already know whose father is Nick's. It's yeah. Tommy Grimes. Well, it's, well the, the I won't say it the same that. way for you, but who's been their toughest match? Like, who's the, the one that's giving you the most, like, you really prepare differently, maybe prepare differently for that guy because of, you know, size um, or speed or whatever? I mean, there, there's a lot of good receivers. Uh, I would say Geno is, is one of them for sure. I uh, remember that game. What, what game? I, I, I don't remember that game. I bet you don't. That's a DB. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Go ahead. I, I don't remember that game. Oh, uh, I don't remember that game. Uh, nah, but he, he's definitely one. You know, he has a good catch radius. Uh, a person, I, oh, well, I did play Kenny when he was in Edmonton. Yeah, he's he's definitely like that, too. 
Um, I really was looking forward to playing against him, you know, against Winnipeg. Um, but injuries happen. Um, I I definitely say Reggie. He's one of them. I I never really matched up with him because Eagleton? he lined up inside. Yeah, you ever see? But, he goes hard yeah. every play. He doesn't know what five miles or fifty miles per hour mm-hmm. is because he's he's at a hundred every every freaking play. <laughs> nah, and and, it, and he's double teamed every yeah. play. I'm like, so. Um, but real quick, I, I want to piggyback off of what you said about Rams real quick. I, I feel like, you know, Nick, you gave him that uh, – he got that little head top nickname or Mr. Head Top. No, it started I, before I that. It started before I, that. I, 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 feel like, I feel like he got that from you, bro. It started before Twice, that. That was like – That was week four. It, he had a couple early on in, in, in the – you know. He, yeah, he was, you know, building up to it. Like, he yeah. got you earlier. It became and official. Then, it became official. <laughs> he had an agent. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, oh. Now, I, I, think they still show, I think they still show that commercial to this day. No, no, that's, no. That's, that's, it's a new year. New year. They don't show that one anymore. I haven't I seen it. Well, 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 we showed his video on last week. So, if people want to see Nick get burnt a couple of times, they can you watch last week's video. I don't remember. I'm a DB. At heart. I don't remember. I don't remember that play. You got to forget that's that. Yeah, that's, that's good. You, you <laughs> might want to forget that. All right. All right. On to the next question. All right. All right, as we wrap up with Demario, um, you were ranked number twenty nine on the top fifty. Am I correct? You remember? Don't give me that look. You remember? Yeah. Okay. Twenty nine. Yeah, twenty nine. Is that a big motivator for you this season? Uh, it is. Uh, I, I, it is a blessing to be in the top fifty. Do I feel like? I feel like, in my opinion, I was higher than. 29, but I mean, the CFL people that they get paid to make picks. All I do is get paid to play and, you know, perform. Yep. So, um, my goal is to be higher every year. Um, my goal is to beat all my goals from the previous year. So, of course, you know, I'm trying to get my crown back, um, interception. You're behind. Uh, can- yeah, I know. It's kind of pissing me off. But I think Milligan, Milligan, he got like three. Yeah, I, I was lead. I was lead. I was. I yeah, was you, leading two you right, missed right the week. So yeah, um, uh, trying to be you know top DB and everything. Yep. top the list of everything, man. Um, but most importantly, win another great cup because mm-hmm. I feel like I was a part of the team, but I wasn't. You know, I I was on PR. So I, I want one that's meaningful to me. I get that. <laughs> I get that. So let me let me ask you a quick question. I know Nick has a couple more, but as someone who's playing the CFL, do, do you still ever, you know, do you get phone calls ever from NFL teams or, you know, how does that work? I mean, I mean there's been some CFL players in the past that have gone from the CFL to the NFL. Um, is that something that, you know, is still a, a goal for you or um, is that it, just this is the focus right now and you're not worried about that um it it is a goal but i feel like i'm if i was just stay in the cfl um i'm happy where i am um i only really to be honest i only had one nfl experience like my whole life i mean everybody's had a pro day coming out of college but uh-huh. this all season i had like a, a tryout with the chargers um I really, I feel like it went well. Um, in-house stuff that I mean, I guess probably held me back from getting picked up. But I mean, it was a great opportunity, great experience. Like I said, my first NFL, anything. So um, that was that was that was a great moment for me, a big moment for me. But if it came down to it, I I could see myself staying and having a long career in the CFL. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I'm going to piggyback on something else. you said earlier. You mentioned your 40 time of 4.37. Um, I mean, Nick and I have been having this uh, debate conversation where I don't know if you've seen it or not in any of our videos, but he's massively disrespectful. Did you run track in high school or in college? Yeah. You did. I did in high school. Okay. 
Nick says that in his prime, he could have walked out onto a track. That's not what I said. And run a, and run a sub. No, that's what he said first. I have it on text. He's adjusted because that's what Nick does. He adjusts commentary. Well, I, was supposed, to yeah. Yeah. I was supposed to elaborate for him. Um, but he says he could walk out with six months of training now. That's his newest one. And run a sub 9.9 nine in the 100. Just because so, he ran a 4.09 one day. One day. And, yeah. And I felt it might it might have been like a hand watch. I'm I'm sure it wasn't electronically. You so. know, I, and I'm and I'm telling him, I'm like, I know you're fast as hell, but like these guys are the like there's only been fifty guys in the world of his, the history of this world who run a sub nine nine. And I will be fifty one. And and and, no, and no. Jamarcus Jamarcus from the hood could run a, a nine nine two. It's, it's a couple of people out there that didn't get a chance. If you give them, you put them on the blocks, you show them how to run some technique. But, you know they'll be able to run a nine nine or nine nine five. They'll be under no, a ten for sure. No, no, just, you, just, you fast. I get, I get that, but you you're not doing all that. Huh? You didn't even no. see me when I was at my fastest, and you lost to me in a race when I was I was thirty four no. years old. 34 no, years you old. Off, you hold on, hold on. I'm not, I'm not done. I was 34 ahead, years old, ahead. Rudy. I, I I was barely getting any sleep. I just had a baby. Um, we're, you know, I'm coming into practice and meetings in the off, you know, the, this uh before camp, we going through like little things with the league and stuff like that. So we're going to hold up. So my eyes is, you know, it's very, very wary. And I walk out there and, and Demario thinks he could, he could beat me in a race. And I say, old oh, man still got wheels. Now, this before the before the Achilles, Rudy. And let's just say everybody was like, Demario, leave that man alone. You're still no, not messing with They, they call me Unk. You're still not messing with Unk. Because I, you I, you, I tore that ass up. No, no, you didn't. You took off early. And, and don't 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 come out. Oh, so Nick cheated. Oh, that, 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 yeah, sounds like, that, that sounds just yeah. like that. Demario left first and it didn't end good. Oh, and if he wow, has a slow God. takeoff, because he can't get out the block, so he ran track, Rudy. He ran track. He, he got a slow takeoff. But you ran, you ran, you ran a hundred. You ran a forty. Yeah. It was like yeah. a quick forty. Oh, okay. But so, Nick, but it, it, again, Nick thinks that running a hundred is like simple shit, and you no, can just walk out there. No. six months of training. Like these guys have been training their entire lives. I say that's the easiest thing to transition to is a, a sprint like that. Where you don't have to maintain the power as long as the two hundred, and 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 it's hey. easier than any sport to go play basketball, football, and learn how to do that. Track would be the hey, easiest Nick, thing if Nick you have some ability to fly. run. Hey, Nick, that he can go out and fly a plane right now if he let him. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cool. No, hey. Nick, Nick, Nick hey. thinks he could have played for the Florida Panthers in the Stanley Cup too. No, no, hey, no. I, 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 don't, I don't. I don't mess with the ice. <laughs> I don't mess with the ice like that. <laughs> hey, I, I love his confidence, but hey. Come on now. Oh. He he, th he thinks he could walk into an, an, an MMA cage and and go, go take on a world champion in no, MMA no, 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 and, no, no, and no, not no. be dead in five seconds. No 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 no. I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I right. see. Okay. See. You you see, Nick, that a, a former track athlete who actually ran track. And he's explaining to you, and you're still debating he's someone a, who ran track. He's a hater. He's hating on he, me because I beat him he, so bad that day. He still he still no. can't let it go. Come on now. Did, did somebody film this? I wish I wish Rudy, they would film it. Rudy, I was 34, no sleep, walking into practice, you know, just <laughs> hanging no on. Sleep. My... You're an early you're a morning person. That's that's you you were up at five AM for fun. I was I was hanging on by a thread. Nico was being a tough baby. It was, it was oh. a time. It was a time. Um hey, Tia had him the whole time. Come on now. That is untrue. That is untrue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Demario, we're going to wrap this up, man. This is the last question, and we got to get you out of here. Um, we know you got curfew. You got to be at the meetings because you, since you're an early person, you get places early now. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, man, last question, man. How far can Calgary go this year, man? I mean, how many interceptions are you predicting that you will finish the season with? Um, I feel like Calgary's going to go as far as winning the Great Cup. Um. We just got to get over the hump, you know, of finishing ball games. We're, we're in every ball game. Um, like I try to tell them, you know, it's, it's the small things that, that a win or lose ball games. Um, and I've witnessed it and experienced it, you know, great cups. Um, but 
the interception question, um, I'm trying to go 10 plus. Okay. 10 That's plus. An elite category right there. I, I never would have made it there because they didn't throw the ball at me like that. So, <laughs> you know, it's different. Oh, Do you even oh. listen to him? Like, there's nothing. Like, he's, he, he, he got an excuse. He some, got an excuse for everything. People, he, went, he went two and two in his picks this week, and, of course, he blamed it on something. I'm blaming it, it on Calgary not finishing. He was just wrong. He's, Calgary he just, not yeah. finishing the game. I picked them as an upset over Montreal, and they don't finish the game. Come on. Now. The other game, Toronto, they have the game. It's 2020. The, the young quarterback goes out there and oh, throw a pick six. They just Lord, he... blow the game at the end. Come on, man. It was this close, man. They go against the backup quarterback. They got to take advantage of that, man. I know they were playing on the road, but come on. It's two for two. I know people that went worse. And Calgary blew it for me. I should have been three and one easily. Demario, tell Coach Dickinson to get it right. Are, are there too much on the team? Before you go, Demario, um, are there any embarrassing stories you have of Nick that we don't know about in the locker room? Because Nick likes to act like he was like King Dingling and, and, and ran the locker room and was the man and I, I, all that shit. I mean, he used to record himself in the locker room. He talks about like people recording themselves in the locker room. He's always recording himself in the locker room and then posting it on social media. You're asking the wrong person because he's the, he's the biggest recorder next to me right there. <laughs> hey. Oh. I, hey, hey, Rudy. No, I'm not even going to tell about what you be doing at halftime. But okay. I, I'm not going to get you in trouble with the commission. I did not even do that. Oh, dang. I can't even think of nothing. But now nah, he used to get bullied. Uh, bullied? And, yeah, he used to get bullied. He He's supposed oh, to get be the bullied. Home, you know, oh, get but, bullied. Yeah. Yeah. By who? Uh, he, come on now. Everybody. All the DP. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't think of no story right now. Dang. Right, well, we'll, we'll be it, posting. It, it, so you can type it up and put it in, in in the comments and let the world know. We, we'll take it that way too. Oh yeah. Oh, we, yeah. we appreciate it. Uh, we thank you for coming on and um, everyone. Yeah, De, Demario Houston, Calgary Stampeders. We thank you for being our first guest. Nick, anything left? Get healthy, man. Have a good year, man. Um, if you need me back out there next to you, man, holler at me. I might, I might come out, come out the booth, man. Man, man I tried to, I tried to say you come, come back with me one more year. We could have oh, had the last, the last day. The last day, huh? Yeah. But now, yeah. I appreciate y'all, fellas, for having me on. Thank you. It's All right, pleasure, man. Have a good appreciate year, man. All right, have yeah. a good one. Okay, so we thank the Mary. It's it, it, I don't know if you see it on your screen still, but he, it's it's off. Yeah, uh, we we thank the Mary the Mario Houston for joining us today. Our first guest on Come On CFL. We were trying to get some more dirt on Nick, so he's been he was beaten up by people in the locker room, is what we just found out at the end. That did not happen. Uh, and, and we also found out that he that he is a. Uh, Runs a, a four five in the forty, not a four oh nine. Um, and a track athlete actually explained to him that running a hundred in nine point nine second sub is damn near impossible unless you've been doing it your whole life.